morning from Joe Jakarta. We are leaving this morning and today is going to be an interesting video because we're not really sure how today is going to play out. Our goal today is to head to a place called Nepal in Indonesia or Nepal in Java and my friend Witty sent it to me who's also my video editor and he said I think you'll really like this. It's beautiful. It's an agricultural area so it's all farming on a mountain and it's on the way to his town Salatiga. So the issue is there's not a lot of information about how to do this independently. A lot of people rent a motorbike here in Joja, go there for a couple nights and come back. But we're actually heading through to Salatiga, heading north, so that's not going to work. So our first goal is to get to the bus station. There are two bus stations in Joja. One is close, one is farther away. But Alan did some reading and it looks like the farther one away is the better one. From there, we'll go to Malalang which is a large town or city. From there, at the market apparently, there should be some transportation to get us up to the village. But we're not entirely sure, so we're gonna take you along for the ride. Let's see what happens. All right, first up, we need to get a grab to the bus station. Joja, or the tourist area, to this bus station, which is very big, was 54000 So actually, I think taking a bike would be cheaper because to rent a bike for the day is 80000 So if you went for two days, it'd be 160. That was not an option for us. And we also decided to leave during rush hours. And now we didn't have to wait to find a bus. Because we're on the way to Samarang and Saldatiga, there are lots of buses heading in that direction. So there's one that's ready to go, it's 30,000. But we don't know how long it's gonna take. And so I think we had to pick up something for the bus for breakfast. Not the healthiest breakfast, but it will be tasty. This is, so this is chombrok. So it's flour, although chombrok means bread. It should have carrot in the middle. I think I've had this before actually at the airport. Oh no, there's nothing in the middle. No, oh, it's sweet. It's like a sugar bread. Because we're going to a smaller village, one of the things that I talked to Alan about was actually just customs. So depending on where we are, I always try to dress appropriately. In cities, I can wear shorts. Tank tops are not really ever appropriate. So t-shirts are good. Today I have on a long dress, long sleeves. It's just to be polite. It's not a religious thing. It's actually, there are many religions here, but Java, West Sumatra are still very polite, formal societies. The other element of it is actually how you address people. So very common to still say, sir, madam, miss. In West Sumatra, it's very easy for men and women because there's basically just sir and madam. Here in Java, it's a little bit more complicated. So, help me out here. If the women are younger, you call them boo. So everyone is a boo. Everyone is boo, to be polite. That's madam. Most common. Most common. And then if someone is much older, you call them mba. So it's an mba, mba. And then for men, all men are called mas except older or more distinguished people are called pa. So that's P-A-K, but you kind of just pronounce it like P-A with a short stop. We were waiting for so long I decided to go to the bathroom because we don't know how long this drive is. And of course, as I decide to go, the bus wants to take off. So the guy that we really came in, he was like, he kept saying daddy daddy, but I think, and I was like, what? I think he was trying to say hurry, hurry, it's taking off. But we made it. This bus is not very full, but that's okay. That's gonna take us to Megalang. So first it stop. It takes one hour, 45 minutes. One hour, 45 minutes. Oh, we got more of those little bread, sweet bread things. Just two more because I was worried about being hungry. There's nothing worse than being hungry on a bus. Anyway, so one, 45. I don't think this bus ride is going to be very interesting, so I will see you in Magalang. Alright, so that was 
unexpected. We thought it was gonna take almost two hours to get to Malalang. It was more like under 45 minutes. So we are now at the bus station and Alan said there are two ways to get there. We can either take a grab or we can take public transportation, but it's two different buses, I think. The problem is we don't know how far away we are and also we don't have any data on our phone. So we need to get them data and then we'll figure things out. But also Alan needs to wake up because he's still very in like sleep mode. One of the things that Alan told me, which is pretty common sense, but just reminded me, was not to be too friendly at the bus station. You need to be polite, but he knows that I like to chat with people. You have to be aware of yourself, aware of your belongings, and maybe take people's advice with a grain of salt if it benefits them. Alan was talking to some people and there was one office here that offered to take us, explain how to get there. We have to first get to the local market and from there you take an Ojek or what is like a local taxi up to Nepal Van Java. They have offered 120 for both of us to go to the market which is an hour away. But we're gonna go get data because if there's Gojek here, I actually think it would be cheaper than taking one of these buses for 120. It feels a bit expensive. I think one of the things that's hard with pricing is that although Alan is local, I am not clearly a boule, and so sometimes I feel like even though he's Indonesian, they give him a higher price because they just assume I'm gonna pay for it, or that we have money. Alan's trying to figure out this local collectivo guy asked where I was going, and I was like, oh, Alan, go talk to him. Where, what did he say? Is he going in that direction? If we go with the public transport, yeah. it took three times yeah. to change the public transport with the different areas. Right. So, so he offer also like the, the men yeah. on the at the bus station, uh, bus station. For, for how much? Then drive us to the Kalangri market about 125. Oh, that's more expensive. Okay, so I do think 125 is kind of crazy because we could probably rent a bike for 24 hours, bring it back tomorrow for less than that. But there's price and then there's convenience. And so we don't want to spend all day in transportation. So Alan's going to see if he can get it for 100 and then if that's the case, We'll just take this. This only gets us to the traditional market. From there, we then need to find a local Ojek, which is like a local cab. Okay, so this is a one hour drive. It's costing us 120. We could definitely get it, do this cheaper if we had a bike, but we're helping the local economy and we're saving time because otherwise this hour because we're going so far we would have to take three different public transportation systems wait for them it just makes more sense to pay and go it's same with, uh, with what i see in the internet from the terminal to the traditional market it's just one hour it takes one hour yeah you can imagine if you go by the public It wasn't 
an hour, more like half an hour, I think. But we're here, and again, in the middle of nowhere. But people have already approached us about an OJ. All right, guys. We're in Central Java, but we're going for Nasi Padang. Central Java loves Nasi Padang. And it's good here because they have more vegetables. Now it's kind of funny because Alan is from Padang. And so we're traveling to a completely different place but having Nasi Padang, but also in Central Java. They really love it. You can find it all over Joja. They have lots of it here. One of the reasons I really like it is because here they have also tempeh, tofu, and usually more vegetables. So the idea here is that there is a bunch of food, you choose what you want to eat, and then you pay for what you eat. So you can see here, it's all made fresh and then you just choose what you want to eat. Every place is different and it's usually very regional. So because we're by the water, you'll see more fish and because we're in Java, you'll see more tempeh. Oh, they have lots of fish. They do have a self-service. Oh, it's self-service here. Yeah. So sometimes you just point and they put it on a plate for you. But actually, this is a couple times here in Java that we've had it that it's like a buffet. So you just choose what you want, how much you want. I also feel like a lot of the nasi padang here is cheaper than a padang. What do you think? As long as I know more to the village, yeah, it's yeah, and the fish is cheaper for sure. So, ocean fish, potato, tempeh, and then I got some tapioca leaves in a little bit of rendang sauce because the tapioca is bitter and the rendang is a spicy beef stew, so it'll help the flavor. Alright, that was a great lunch. Turns out the owner is actually from Padang, and so that's why they only have the tapioca greens. It's an authentic place. So if you're wondering about um, just nasi padang and the food being out, what they do is they usually have bigger portions inside that are covered, and then they have some out for display that turns over very quickly, and it doesn't just sit out in the open. There's actually a curtain to keep the flies out and any bugs and just to keep everything clean. Very safe. Now, next step of our journey, we are still not even close. Well, I guess we're two thirds of the way. Um, we're now on our last leg, which could be the hardest. So we need to get an Ojek, which is a local taxi, to go to our homestay. We've heard it's gonna take an hour. It's 50 per bike. That's right. Cars can't actually go up into this village. So we're going to each be on our own bike with our backpack on, and it's gonna take us up the hill. It takes so long because it's apparently a steep Volcano man. We'll see. Alan's talking to the owner here. Because he's from Padang, he feels like he can get some good advice, like Mining Kabao to Mining Kabao. I asked about the transport to go there. Uh, the men say this restaurant owner, how much the people offer to you? I said 50. Oh, it's too expensive. So, usually, usually it's about 25 or, 25 or 75. So how long does it take to get there? It's less than one hour. It's less than an hour. Yeah, say, Everyone always tells us it's longer than it is. Yeah. So I think that's why it's always important to find out before you come how much things cost. Even for us, because we weren't able to do the work up front, there was not a lot of information online, um, we were charged double. And it's because of me. It's not because of Alan, it's because he's with me. So he's gonna take some time, find a different driver, find the right price, and apparently, according to um, the owner at this restaurant, it doesn't take an hour. So that is fantastic news. All right, so it looks like we overshot our hostel by a little bit, we think. The reception up here for Google Maps isn't so great, but I will say this. Alan was fantastic, was able to negotiate to 40 a ride, but having come up here, it was worth it. Cars can come up here, you can see, but that's a, that, that's a hard bike ride. The drivers were also fantastic, and uh, overall, it seemed like it would be very stressful, but I think we're here. Okay, change of plans. Five minutes in, I thought, what are we doing only staying here one night? Let's stay two. So let's show you the room that we moved into because it has a great view. This is a simple spot, very local, but look at this view. This is 250,000 a night. 
and this is what we'll wake up to. It's so beautiful here. And then you have a bathroom, although this is a local place, so local bathroom, but there is hot water, so that's perfect. This place, ah, oh, I'm so excited to stay a couple nights. So we made it here. It was quite the journey and I think it was a lesson that convenience is better than going the cheapest way because it probably would have taken us all day if we went the cheapest, but we made it. This homestay was not on the booking sites. I don't think there are really any homestays on the booking sites. We actually found it just by searching Nepal Van Java homestay on Instagram. We found four places. Alan called all of them, negotiated with them, and we ended up here. The reason he chose it was for this view. Oh, it's gonna be fantastic. But I'm gonna end this video here because I think we just need to relax, get some coffee before we go out, start walking around and checking things out. Also, it's Sunday, so I feel like there's big crowds right now that might go away. We'll see. But I'll see you in the next video. We're gonna share with you all of Dusun Batu, which is known as Nepal in Java. See you then. Join my Patreon community for more behind the scenes and exclusive content you won't find elsewhere. You can also find me on Instagram and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All of these things make my day. Thank you so much for your support.